Hey everybody, welcome back into the channel. Today we've got another awesome gear review for you. Today we're gonna to be looking at the Mouthpiece Cafe Espresso Tenor Mouthpiece. <laughs> So I've had this mouthpiece for a number of years, played it in a lot of different situations, so I think I can tell you the pros and cons of this mouthpiece pretty faithfully. So let's start by talking about this company, Mouthpiece Cafe. This is a very, very small sort of boutique mouthpiece company. So the two main mouthpiece makers slash refacers that started this company are the great Brian Powell and Eric Greifenhagen. And Eric, I'm super sorry for butchering your name. I've been trying to figure it out all day and that's the best I got. But you may recognize these two names. These two are at the top of the mouthpiece refacing and custom work game when it comes to getting work done on mouthpieces. Countless professional musicians are playing on pieces that have been worked on by these two. So that right there is a vote of confidence in my mind right off the bat. Both of these craftsmen are disciples of the great Ralph Morgan. So there's another name that you know is quality. A little bit more about this company, they do have a lot of different models ranging from slant copies to pieces like the Primo and the House Blend, as well as the Espresso. I think you're starting to see a little bit of a theme here and it has to do with coffee. So there's a little bit of background from the company who's producing these mouthpieces. Now let's get into the actual mouthpiece. So this mouthpiece is meant to copy the short shank Selmer soloist that was made famous by so many musicians. Probably the most famous and well-known is Joe Henderson, but you've got people like Gary Campbell and Eddie Harris and Rich Perry that all play that vintage Selmer soloist style mouthpiece. So if you're a fan of any of those musicians who are so amazing. I'm like one of the biggest Joe Henderson fans in the world. That was one of the reasons that I bought this mouthpiece. It has a lot of the same characteristics of those vintage mouthpieces, but it comes with a few advantages that we'll talk about later. So let me tell you about my particular setup with this mouthpiece as I'm going to be interspersing some of myself playing throughout. You'll know exactly what I'm playing on. So I've obviously got the Espresso mouthpiece. It's in a seven star tip opening, which on their website is listed as 105 as the exact measurement of the opening, pretty middle of the road. I've got my old Rico H ligature that I'm gonna be playing on, playing on a Boston Sack Shop 3 reed and I'm playing on an Ishimori Woodstone tenor saxophone. <laughs> So as I mentioned, mine is a seven star tip opening, and I think this is one of the first advantages over the old Selmer soloist style mouthpieces, is that these come in tip openings that are much more familiar to us modern saxophonists, whereas the Selmer soloist you know, came in these different lettering numbers, right? C, D, E, F, G, H. These are put into terms that most of us understand, like a number followed by either a star or some other marking. And that seems to be the system that most mouthpiece manufacturers use is the number system. So that makes it a little bit easier, you know, rather than digging through a bunch of these listings for these vintage mouthpieces and not really understanding what the tip opening is. Now, something else that happens when you buy a vintage mouthpiece is that you may want to have it opened up a little bit. Like say, for instance, if you find a C model of the vintage Selmer Soloist, most likely for most situations that people are playing in jazz-wise, you're gonna have to have that opened up. 
This one comes with a common jazz tip opening already. So you could play it right out of the box. You do not have to worry about sending it out to be refaced. That also saves you a lot of money. So let's talk about the geometry of this mouthpiece a little bit. One of the defining characteristics of these Selmer soloist style mouthpieces is the shape of the chamber. They have kind of this cool oval, almost square kind of chamber. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna bounce the air around in the mouthpiece a little bit more. In my mind, it creates a little bit of a more complex, deep tenor sound, rather than when you have that straight shot. Now there are advantages to that sort of straight shot round chamber. One is that you can get a little bit more projection and that's something we're gonna talk about with this piece is that it's not the best if you have to blast. <laughs> Inside features a very, very subtle rollover baffle. Now, one thing about the table and the side rails and the tip rail, they're perfect. It's very, very clear to me that a lot of time and effort went into the design and the finishing of these particular mouthpieces. Anyone that I've ever talked to that has one of these has had the same experience as I have. It comes in the box, ready to play, no work needed. And that's a testament to Brian and Eric and their finishing skills and their attention to detail. Now you can see on the end of the mouthpiece, very reminiscent of that vintage Selmer soloist. The Selmer soloist had this nice kind of scroll design and they just put two rings on this, but it looks a heck of a lot like one of those soloist mouthpieces, which makes a lot of sense. So let's talk about how the geometry of the mouthpiece informs what I would use to describe the sound. So I would describe the sound from this mouthpiece as very, very dark and complex. Some words that I used already. So if you're somebody that plays in a lot of situations where you don't have to push very hard, this mouthpiece is gonna be a dream for you. I find that my low dynamic, my soft dynamic playing is just fantastic with this mouthpiece. I barely even have to try, and I get this nice, beautiful, warm, deep sound from this. <laughs> shortcoming of this mouthpiece, and it's not really a shortcoming, it's just not what it's designed to do. You guys know if you watch my videos, I play in a lot of situations where I have to project over a large, large ensemble, and I don't always have sound reinforcement to help me with that, which is why this is not my main mouthpiece. It just won't work in enough situations for me to use it, you know, more than 75% of the time. But if I'm playing a small jazz club or I'm playing in a restaurant, this is my go-to mouthpiece. Even if I'm playing on a larger stage, but I know that I'm gonna have awesome professional sound reinforcement, I'll go with this. And another thing that I've noticed, and this is probably because I was trying to push it too hard, is that my intonation goes very, very sharp. And I think you could get rid of that if you were playing in a more controlled way, but that's one of the reasons that I moved away from this for a lot of different situations, is that as I pushed harder, the pitch went up and up and up and up. So I don't know if that'll be the same for you. I'm just speaking from my own experience that this mouthpiece tends to go really sharp on me when I start pushing at all. And again, that's probably just me and my shortcomings as a saxophonist. <laughs> So 
let's talk about the price of this mouthpiece. It is extremely reasonable for what you get. These mouthpieces retail for $275 on their website, and it seems to be the same at all the retailers that carry these particular pieces. Now, in the world of a professional, and I would definitely consider this a professional level tenor mouthpiece, that is really cheap. I mean, we're starting to see prices in the $300 to $600 range. And then when you start to get into vintage, forget about it. Now you're looking at anywhere from like $800 to $1,500. So extremely reasonably priced, especially if you think about the quality that you're getting for that price. Now, if you compare that to a vintage soloist, you're looking at anywhere from like 250 to 400 just for the vintage mouthpiece alone. And then most likely you're gonna have to send that mouthpiece out to get it refaced or opened up or whatever. So if you think about it in those terms, this is an even more reasonable price for something that I think gets really, really close to the vintage model of this. I would love to do a comparison, but I don't have a vintage soloist anymore. So I'm not gonna be able to make that video. Maybe someday in the future if I pick another one up. I feel very comfortable giving this particular piece my full recommendation. If you have any other questions about it, please let me know in the comments below. Hopefully if you're in the market for one of these or something like it, this review was helpful to you. That's what we're after here on the channel. Also, let me know what other gear you would like to hear reviewed. I'm always on the lookout for what's gonna be the most useful to all of you out there watching. Lastly, thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate you guys tuning in video after video. Hopefully we're helping you with your gear buying slash addiction issues pointing you in the right direction. That's gonna about do it from here. Hope you guys are doing well, staying safe out there, and we will talk to you on the next video. Bye everybody.